Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Angela Thomas-Smith. You are listening to Walk in Purpose with Angela on the Kingdom Influences Broadcast Network. I am your purpose strategist here to provide you with the ultimate E3 experience, educate, empower, and encouraging you to walk in your purpose. I'm super excited about our guest today. We have... Sister Esther with us. She's from Nigeria, and I'm super excited to have her here with us today. Actually, it's morning here, but it's evening time there, and I am grateful for her being on this call today. But before we go any farther, I would like to um, go into prayer like always. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Father, I come before you right now with humbleness. I know how, Lord God. Lord, thanking you yet again for another day that was not promised us, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing for the Kingdom Influences Broadcast Network for Walk in Purpose um, show with Angela. I thank you for each guest that had participated in our radio show. Uh, I thank you for each and every person that is tuned in and is listening on today, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for what is about to take place, Lord God. I hope that the message that comes forth on today, Lord God, be a blessing to someone that would encourage them to walk in their purpose, Lord God. Because in Jeremiah 29 and 11, you said that you had a you had a plan for our lives to prosper us, for us to be in good health, for us to have hope in the future, Lord God. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this platform, Lord God, that gives the authors and individuals an opportunity to share, Lord God, to share their pain to their purpose, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that as someone listens on today, that they will be encouraged to walk in their purpose. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Let it not be about Angela and Esther on today, Lord God, but allow your son Jesus to shine through us that we may reach somebody for the building of your kingdom. These things I ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. I just want to let you you guys out there in listening land know that we have Sister Esther with us. She's from Nigeria. Um, she It is afternoon there, and um, it's 9 a.m. here in the morning, and I want to thank her for sacrificing her afternoon to come and be a part of our show here in the U.S. Sister Esther, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good, good afternoon and good morning to the people in the U.S. Good morning. I'm grateful to be on this show. I just want you to share a little bit about yourself um, and how you came about your organization and what you are doing. Um, I think it is um, amazing at the work that you're doing in Nigeria. Um, We connected through Facebook, and um, we have some similar things um, going on, and I'm super excited for the connection and hoping that either – you guys could get to the U.S. or either we can get to Nigeria. And I, I, I'm, I'm super excited to have you share on uh, today uh, with the audience a little bit about your organization, a little bit about you and how you are walking in your purpose. Okay. Good morning, um, U.S. I am Esther Chibuzo Anacho. I'm the founder of Raising Young Authors. I live in Nigeria, and I'm from Nigeria, and I'm super happy to be with you on this show. Um, Our organization is Raising Young Authors. Raising Young Authors was established to raise younger authors that will be able to stand in the international stage of writing. And we believe that if we need to get the children, or if we need to get international writers, we need to start early. And that's why we started the Raising Young Authors. And today we are making waves right here in Nigeria. Our children are writing very well. And, and thank God for the course taken with uh, Empowering Writers in U.S. It has helped our children, and our children are doing marvelously well. And we believe someday most of these Nigerian children will be seen on the international stage, making good writing and having marvelous books. And we want to say a very big thank you to you for recognizing our effort. And I know together we're going to raise wonderful authors in the next future. Um, Working in our purpose was not really a very um, 
smooth road. It took us time to be able to establish this, but we were determined. And when you want to work in your purpose, you have three stages. You have the pushing stage, you have the sipping stage, and you have the rolling stage. It was difficult pushing it off the mountain. But thank God we are at the tipping stage, and we know with determination and um, persistence we are going to take it to that rolling stage. And raising young authors will one day come and visit you in the U.S., and we also believe that one day you come and visit us in Nigeria when our children start writing wonderful stories. Thank you. Amen. I just want, um, I want you to repeat those three stages because I, I got pushing. I, I like to take notes too. So I got the pushing part, but what was the other, the other two steps that, that this needed, okay. that you feel I is needed to pursue to, your purpose? Yes. Fulfill your purpose. You have three stages. You have the pushing stage. It's as if you're rolling something up the hill, up the mountain. And that, the first stage is the pushing stage where you need determination, you need focus, you need um, persistence to get it to the seat. And the second stage is what we call the tipping point. It's very difficult getting to the tip, uh, tipping point because if between the pushing point you leave it, it rolls back. But when you're able to get to the tipping point, you're balanced. But you can't stay there. You need to get it rolling. And the third stage is the rolling point, where you just need guidance so that it won't bear off. That's where you are successfully accomplishing your purpose, when you get to the rolling point. But the pushing point, nobody sees you. You have to be determined to do it alone. But when you get to the tipping point, you're up the mountain, and so many people see you, but you still need determination to push it down. And when it gets to the rolling course, rolling point, it rolls on its own, but you still need to guide it so that it won't get off. Those are the three stages of fulfilling your purpose. So when when did you realize what your purpose was um, here on Earth? Okay, we... I, I realized that I was just meant to, I, I'm a good writer, but um, being a good writer alone wasn't just all. We need to pass it down to the younger generation. And so I had this determination. I know I've been, there's a purpose inside of me to fulfill. And that was what I wanted to do. And by God's grace and determination, we were able to fulfill our purpose. Raising Young Authors was born a year ago, and since then we have been working tirelessly to make it a function. So what all do y'all do um, through your organization? Do y'all provide publishing? Do y'all provide coaching, um, workshops? Um, what are all the um, services that you guys provide and opportunities that you provide for your youth um, in Nigeria? Okay, Raising Young Authors um, provides services. We are into coaching, coaching other teachers to be able to raise young authors in their schools. We are also into workshops for children, doing, mostly during the holidays. We organize um, writing workshops for children where children come in, we teach them how to write, and also we also organize competitions where we bring children from different schools, organize competition from them, and at the end, those that we emerge winners will surely go with the present. This is to encourage them, to ignite the passion of writing in them, and to make them become better writers in future. That's what the services we do. Right now we're on Facebook, we are um, on Facebook, our uh, organization is there, Raising Young Authors. We are also on Instagram, Raising Authors. We have um, a group, Creative Writing Teachers, on Facebook too. So we are working tirelessly to cover every nook and corner of Nigeria to make sure we raise younger authors that will take over. So how many authors have you guys published um, through the organization since y'all started? 
Right now, we have uh, we had about the last workshop we did. We made sure that we we had three to five children who were able to write their own book, and these books were published. Since the inception of raising young authors, we've been able to publish at least 15 books from children writing their own books. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I truly believe in um, children can be successful now. I, that's one of my mottos. I believe that kids don't have to wait till they're an adult to um, sure. fulfill their dream. They can start taking little steps now um, to to um, pursue their dreams and to pursue their passion. Um, one of my things is pushing the E3 experience, which is educate, empower, and encourage. Um, that's something that we really push with our kids here in um, Anderson, South Carolina. Um, I truly, um, we are um, in South Carolina, our educational system, um, as far as the United States um, is concerned, we rank number 50 out of 50 states, which wow. is unacceptable. It's okay. unacceptable. We have the poorest um, educational system in the United States. Um, we have the poorest, um, well, we, we're not last in literacy at least. We're, we're ranked number 39, but it's still on the bottom. But as far as education overall, we rank number 50. But the sad mm-hmm. part about it is we're number one in domestic violence and gun violence. And that's something that um, we're trying to change. We're trying to get kids more involved in mm-hmm. writing and reading so that it would give them an outlet to express some of the anger and some of the things that they're going through and some of the things that have that, that hinders them, that causes them to lash out, that causes them to have um, behavior disorders and that causes them to have these different things. I feel like if, if kids and adults as well, if they're able to share and it be an outlet for them to release, that it will um, also benefit the community as well. It will cut back on some of the violence. But truly being focused on education and literacy, because if we can't read, it it, it hinders our financial growth, our physical growth, it hinders us all around because our self-esteem suffers because if we can't read, we don't want to participate in activities. We're going to be standoffish. We're going to be angry. It's going to be a lot of different things that's going to come along with us not being able to read. And here in the USA, if you cannot read by grade three, then you won't know how to read, and, and that's statistically have been proven. Um, wow. After grade three, they're no longer doing structural reading exercises. They're no longer doing the things that you need to develop as a reader. So if you're behind by third grade, you're going to be behind the rest of your life unless you work on it personally. Um, in the school systems, they don't even um, teach um, handwriting anymore. All they teach is print. They don't teach you how to write in cursive. They don't teach you how to sign your name. So if it's, if you're not, if parents are not spending time with their kids and providing these resources for their kids, then they're going to be behind. <clears throat> Can you tell me some of the struggles that you guys have with your organization and um, getting support from the community, um, getting kids involved, getting parents involved? Are y'all connected with any schools? Um, how, how does your organization play a part in your community? Okay. Well, some of the challenges we have is making the children read. Uh, one, one thing about writing is that when you're a good re- reader, you somehow writing becomes easy. And so if we want those children to become good uh, writers, we must make them read. And so um, because of that, we open the book club so that children will read. But because you are not always there with them, sometimes they do it and sometimes they don't do it. So those are some of the challenges. Other challenges we have is... Um, having um, enough capital to be able to produce these children's books. Yes, they are writing, but another thing, one thing is to write, another thing is to publish what they have written. And so sometimes uh, money becomes a constraint, getting enough capital to 
do it. And recently, we also want to do a Young Writers Conference. Um, getting sponsors from other people is always um, a difficult thing because people, I don't know if they don't see anything about writing. So when you tell them it's for a writing conference, they get to sh shy away from it because it's maybe it's not something they're going to benefit from. But uh, we, 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 we are working in our purpose and we are bent to establish and make our purpose fulfilled. And so irrespective of the challenges, we're going to see surgery ahead until we have a breakthrough. But right now, we're trying to manage the challenges so that um, we will be able to come out successfully by God's grace. So are you a published author as well? Um, I've written a book, but I have not finally published it. But it's, it's almost getting ready. By the end of um, June, it should be published. Well, we'll definitely have to have you back on the show so that you can um, share with us um, about your your book. Um, but right now, I would love for you to share a little information about how um, our readers could connect with you. Um, if you can give them your email address, you can give them your links to your website, um, different other ways of connecting with you on social media, things like that. Okay. Uh, we have an email. My e uh, email is uh, raisingyoungauthors at gmail.com. That's our email. We also have one, chibuzoesther at gmail.com. So we're using the two for our email. Okay. And since we have um, you on the phone, I know that there are sometimes some challenges um, that <clears throat> that we um, face with um, running the organization and um, trying to make sure that we're doing the things that we're doing for the community and make sure that um, we're doing it in excellence. Um, are there any needs that um, you guys may need um, that somebody listening may be able to assist you guys with? Yes. Um, um, we, we want to give back to the society, and that's why Raising Young Authors was born in the first place, to mm -hmm. reach out to those people or those children that feel that um, hope is lost, they can't fulfill their purpose, and we know they can write. So we come up with encouraging them, writing the passion of writing in them, so that they will be able to fulfill their purpose. And that's what we have been doing, and um, we believe we will surely fulfill our purpose. Now, was there a need for books um, for your book clubs? Um, because I know that you guys um, do a book club. Um, is there a need for books, um, children books, for your book club? Yes, we, we we really appreciate books coming in so that these children will have these resources at their back and core. They will see how other people are write, writing and also write. We need books. And also during the conference, we need books to give out to children to encourage them so that they will be able to keep going at what they're doing. We really need encouragement. We need children over here to come over and see how other children are, other um, writing clubs. They should be part of other writing clubs there in the U.S. so that they will see the other methodologies that the teachers over there are using and be able to come here and implement it. I think we really need those help. We will be grateful if we are getting it from you. So um, we want to um, challenge um Children book authors out there that are listening, um, if you have any books that you would like to donate to the organization um, to help with their book clubs, if you would um, contact me here at the show, um, Angela Thomas Smith, Walk in Purpose, um, I will make sure to um, get you in contact with Sister Esther. Again, she's doing some amazing work in Nigeria. She's helping <clears throat> young authors um, 
produce their books and um, become published authors. And I think she's doing some amazing work. So I would like to applaud you on that. Um, uh, I just want to know that in your process of walking into your purpose, I know sometimes we all go through some things that kind of hinder us from getting to our, our purpose of, of what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, I just want to know, because there may be somebody listening out there that are going through something right now, and they're not realizing what their purpose is. And, and, and I want to help them understand that they're not alone in this world, that they are not the only person that has, has been where they are now. Um, because we've all been through something. Um, before I became an author and before I became a radio show host and became, before I became a lot of things, um, there were a lot of roadblocks in my life that hindered me from doing exactly what it was that I was supposed to do. So I want you to share with some of the listeners, because some people sometimes think that, you know, they hear that you're doing good, they hear that you're walking in purpose, and they think that you've had it easy, and that's not the road. So can you share with us any roadblocks that you may have had in trying to get this organization up and running and getting it established over in Nigeria? Uh, so many roadblocks. So many, so many roadblocks. I I conceived this um, dream about five years ago, but each time I wanted to start, it was one thing or the other, and it was a seed. I was also afraid. Uh, I was afraid to start because I felt if I start, people might not buy into my idea. Uh, I was also looking at the finances and uh, how to start in the first place. Um, but so many challenges that I was focused. It took me four years to finally let it go. I said, I'm going to start. No matter what uh, challenges I go through, no matter, even though nobody will come, I will still start. And uh, when I started, we were just five children started with me. And um, they came the first day, and the second day I didn't see them, so I just felt, uh, after all, this is not working at all. But I was determined to stand by. And this I did, and from five we got up to four. 10, 10, we pushed up to 20, and today we have so many children under us. Um, I always tell people that um, if you are focused, some of the challenges will give way, and because life itself will always test you. Life itself will always test you to see if you are going to fulfill your purpose. And if you don't think of it, if you don't try to be focused, you will see the obstacles more. And so obstacles are those things we see when we take our eyes off the purpose. So if your eyes are off the purpose, no matter the challenges, no matter the storm, you will still get to where you are going to. It took us five years before we finally established Raising Young Couples. And even when we started, we had challenges, but today we don't regret it at all. Raising young authors is waxing strong, and we believe someday we'll be known all over the world. So I just want to tell somebody out there that I had a purpose and thought it's not working out or afraid to step out. Don't be afraid of the depths of the water. Put your leg inside, and I believe you'll surely see my call. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for sharing with us on today. I want to thank you for coming on the show. I wish you much continued success with your organization. Um, I'm always praying for you guys. And um, we definitely have to connect and um, see what we can do um, together. Um, As you guys know, I am the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. And we are an organization that believe in bringing awareness to African American authors all across the U.S. and abroad. So it's our duty and it's our mandate to bring awareness to authors and to focus on literacy within our communities because um, we as 
people have to learn how to stick together, how to come together, and how to support each other um, in all walks of life, no matter what we're doing. Um, we have to learn how to support each other. And that was one of the reasons why I started the organization. Um, so I look forward um, to connecting with you um, and the future young writers of um, Raising Young Authors. Of, of the next generation, um, Raising Young Authors. Um, I, I look forward to connecting with you guys um, because this, they are truly um, our future. And we yeah. have to pour into them if we want to get something out of them. You know, it's just like going to a, a ATM. If you hadn't put anything in it, you're not going to be able to go up there and stick your card in and make a withdrawal. So we have to put something in these babies in order to be able to withdraw something out of them later on. Um, and they are our future, so we have to pour into them. So I want to thank you again for um coming on the show and being a part of our show. Um, I thank you for um, all that you're doing and um, keep up the amazing work. Um, if you have enjoyed our show on today, if you have been empowered by Sister Esther, I encourage you to um, subscribe to our um, podcast and to um Visit her page, like her page. If you would like to connect further with her, please um, email her, connect with her. Again, we are putting a call out for children books. We are in need of children books for the organization so that they can continue to provide these book clubs and have books for these events that they're doing over there for these kids and trying to empower, educate, and encourage these kids. And I thank you for a job well done that you're doing, and um, you are truly walking in your purpose, and I thank God for your obedience um, because it is better to be obedient than to sacrifice, and you are truly walking in purpose. So I thank you. You guys have been tuned in to Walk in Purpose with Angela. I am your purpose strategist, Angela Thomas-Smith. Please join us again next Monday, same time, same station. Again, if you would like to connect with me, Angela Thomas-Smith, the Purpose Strategist, please email me at 3ALAC2016 at gmail.com. I look forward to talking to you and connecting. Have a blessed week. Thank you.